Last Sunday, we heard the word of God. Elijah had problem with his family. He didn't raise his children properly. And because of that, the glory of God departed from this family. And the Bible says that he died because he realized that the tabernacle was departed. This morning, I want to bring you in the same mindset so that you can experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because sometimes when we are involved in, in a lot of activities in the church, we always try to put the Holy Spirit aside. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. But God always wants us to be mindful that the Holy Spirit has to lead our lives. The Holy Spirit has to lead the church. The Holy Spirit has to lead our families. So if you put the Holy Spirit aside, you become a religious person. And that's, that's not what God wants for you. And that's not what I want for you. That's why this morning, I pray that as I'm preaching the word of God, the Holy Spirit will minister in your life this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So in the, in the Old Testament, we know that the Holy Spirit has different symbols. You know, as uh, the man of God was saying last Sunday, when we talk about the glory of God, it's also the Holy Spirit. So when they say the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the glory of God has departed, it means the Holy Spirit left Elijah and his family. And in the Old Testament, also we can see that the Holy Spirit was considered as the fire or the cloud. All those things were the symbols of the Holy Spirit. But the problem is that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit will not dwell forever in people. If you sin, the Holy Spirit will depart from you. That's why if you read the book of Psalm uh, 51, when David committed adultery, he was praying, Oh Lord, let the Holy Spirit should not depart from me. Because that was possible. But you are in the season that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Amen? Amen? You are in the season where even you see the Holy Spirit is still there, looking at you. Somebody can say amen on that. Even you are doing wrong thing, the Holy Spirit is there looking at you. That's what the Bible is telling us this morning. Don't quench the, Holy, the life of the Holy Spirit in you. You know, uh, we, we are passing, you know, we are experiencing in these days you know, a lot of things that make us to see that uh, sometimes we, we have the tendency to live according to our own uh, realities. I've seen a lot of people saying, we are in America. This is how we make, how we do in America. My question for you this morning, do we have a Holy Spirit for Africa and a Holy Spirit of America? Or do we have a Holy Spirit in Haiti and a whole, another Holy Spirit in America? Answer my question. It's the same Holy Spirit, isn't it? Amen? So why come that we'll say, yeah, in America, this is how we do? This is how we do, you know? I've even met some pastor who says, hey, don't touch that domain because if you try to touch it, they're going to kick you out here in the church. Do we have two Holy Spirit or two Bible? We agree that it's no, isn't it? It's the same Holy Spirit. So we are facing some reality in our lives that we say, okay, the Holy Spirit, please stay aside from this. This is how we function here in America. I'm telling you, if we, we go with that mindset we will quench the, the Holy Spirit in our life. We will, you know, we, will, we will make the Holy Spirit to be sad without knowing that we are doing it. Amen? Amen? God is still moving. The Holy Spirit is still moving in the church. And we have to make sure that all the reality that we are experiencing, you know, should not be opposed by the action of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says that uh, 
the desires of the flesh opposed on the desire of the Holy Spirit. And somebody will ask me, but what is the flesh? The flesh is what you believe, what you see, what you touch. Huh? When you walk, let's say, I don't know how, how we perceive certain things here. I would just take an example like boyfriend or girlfriends. You know, some people will say, I'm, I'm free to have my boyfriend or my girlfriend. Huh? Does that the Holy Spirit want for you? Some people will say, no, this is how we do here in America. Huh? I can do my stuff. Pastor, stay away from that. But the Holy Spirit doesn't change. Amen? There is an opposition between what we want and what the Holy Spirit wants. Amen? My prayer is that we should go according to what the Holy Spirit wants. Even I'm facing some reality. I will continue to move. I will continue to obey. I will continue to be guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the reality that I'm facing. Because God, the Holy Spirit doesn't change. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a new doctrine that is going on in a lot of churches now. You know, uh, fortunately that our church doesn't uh, celebrate gay marriage. We don't celebrate gay marriage. If you go in our constitution, we don't celebrate that. But if a gay person wants to come here, he'll be welcome. Amen? You don't say amen on that? Amen. We don't close the door for all those people. You can come here. And you will receive what God has for you. Amen? Amen. But Jesus loves them. Loves everyone. That's a reality that we are facing today. And as a church, we have to obey what the Holy Spirit wants for the church. If we say that is the reality. I was in the school. Uh, my, 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 my kid, was, was uh, my daughter was in the school where almost 60 or 70% of the young people going to that school were gay or lesbian. That is among three. If you have five students, three are gay or lesbians. So I said, no, this is, this is tough. We have to do something, isn't it, as a church? It means that if we, the church, we... They say, okay, that is the reality that we are facing today. We have nothing to say. Don't be surprised that your kid will come and tell you one day, hey, dad, this is my husband. And you see a boy standing there. He's a boy too. Or your daughter is saying, this is my wife. And you see a girl standing beside her. Don't be surprised. That's why the reality and what the Holy Spirit is telling you, you have to make the difference. Amen? Because the Holy Spirit will continue to speak no matter what reality we are facing in our season. The Holy Spirit will continue to speak to the church so that we should be holy by God. Hallelujah! That's what the Bible says that what, I don't know, when we walk according to the Spirit, we will not accomplish what our flesh wants. Our flesh like a lot of things. You know, we like, uh, you know, like, like uh, I would just say, take a simple thing, prayer. Our flesh doesn't like prayer. And you can feel it in the morning when God tells you, hey, rise up, pray. What do you say to, to, the, to the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, I'm tired. You see, I walk all night. I can't I, I can pray now. Holy Spirit, wait a little bit. When the Holy Spirit says, hey, next day again, wake up, pray, come and pray. You say, no, Holy Spirit, I'm tired. Don't you see that I'm, I'm walking all night? That's a simple thing that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You can't accept because your flesh say, no, 
I want to sleep more. I can't talk about reading the Bible. When the, Bible, when the Holy Spirit says, hey, go and read the Bible. You say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is too difficult to understand. I can't even understand. So why should I go and, and read it? I can't, I can't understand. Holy Spirit, please leave me alone. You start to fight with, with your flesh. How many people, I will see, how many people have experienced this in the morning when the Holy Spirit tells you, wake up, come and pray. You say, oh, Holy Spirit, I'm so tired. Who have experienced that? I thought all the hands would be just raising. Amen? You face this, isn't it? Or sometimes the Holy Spirit tells you, hey, go to the Bible studies. You will learn something. You say, hey, then to go to the Bible studies, I would prefer to go and spend my time at Chick-fil-A. We have experienced that. You see that, isn't it? You see that there's, there's a wall between what the Holy Spirit wants you to do and what you want to do, isn't it? Amen? Amen? Yes. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, hey, Pastor Baker will call you very soon. Because you don't want Pastor Baker to call you, you will turn your cell phone. Turn it off. Because I know that he will not even call me. Even if he called me, I will not even see his call. You see, you are fighting between what? What the Spirit is telling you and what your flesh is, is telling you. And you will never accomplish what the Holy Spirit wants if you continue to believe by your, your flesh. Amen? Amen? And the Holy Spirit, he's a gentleman. He's always very calm. Because sometimes people think that the Holy Spirit is power. The Holy Spirit is God. He knows you. He knows all what you have in your mind. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, that the Holy Spirit knows all the, the thought of God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has a will. He can give his gift to who he wants. Amen? Amen? So the Holy Spirit is your friend. He's there looking at you. He wants you to have the life of the Holy Spirit. In French, they call it la vie du Saint-Esprit. That's why he's a friend. Look what. When you have an appointment with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, the Holy Spirit is there watching at you. If you are taking your car to go to your appointment, the Holy Spirit will start to speak to you. What are you doing? And you will tell to your mind, I'm starting my car because I have an appointment with my boyfriend or somebody. And the Holy Spirit will continue to look at you. I say, where are you going? That route is not good. But, you know, because your mind thinks that the Holy Spirit is far away. He's there speaking to you. And you will say, no, Holy Spirit, let me go. I'm going on my way. And the Holy Spirit will just look at you. And he will not say nothing anymore. And you will continue your way. You are firing with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the church will come in a certain level. That we will experience the life of the Holy Spirit. You will see sometimes, you will see that there is certain things that you will not fight with the Holy Spirit. You see, if they tell you, do this, do this, do this, do that, do this. If you are still fighting with those things, it means that the life of the Holy Spirit is not yet efficient in your life. Until you will reach in that level where you will not fight anymore with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit tells you something, you will just say, Lord, I will obey. I will do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit starts with what? Obeying. I start to obey the Holy Spirit. When you become a child of God, you receive the Holy Spirit. Every child of God has the Holy Spirit. That's what makes the difference between the Old Testament and, and the New Testament. But look what. The Holy Spirit will start with what we call obedience. Obedience is the first step of my relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit will start to talk to you gently. Hey, wake up. Go and pray. Hey, wake up. Go and read the Bible. If you start to obey the Holy Spirit, you will see that your spiritual life will start to grow. Amen? And the Holy Spirit will have more to tell you. The Holy Spirit will have more direction to give you. The Holy Spirit will have more blessings to give you. When you step on this first level of obedience, when the Holy Spirit tells you. But if you're not yet in that level, it will be very difficult for you to have the life of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And that's what happened with Elijah. And that's what happened with his children. The, you, know, you know, a life away from God doesn't just come and jump on you. He goes with what? Obedience. Are you with me? He goes very slowly. The Holy Spirit can use the pastor to speak to you. The Holy Spirit can use a brother or sister to speak to you. Or the Holy Spirit can come directly to you to speak to you. The first step is, I want to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Who have experienced the voice of the Holy Spirit in his life? What the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, what you are doing is not right. If you are not in that level, we have to pray for you so that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that they pray for them, for them to receive the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can direct your life. Are you in that level? Amen? Amen? Amen. The level of obedience. That is one of the problems in most churches. We are still in this level of obedience. I've seen sometimes, as I was saying in the first service, sometimes God will come in the church and look and say, okay, there are people here who have problems. They need help. And then God will say, hey, brother Junior, I want you to take all your salary for this month. Go and give to that brother. If he don't have that relationship of obedience, do you think that he will take the money and give? It will never happen. That's why even, even to give the offerings and tithe, everything, if we are not in the level of obedience where the Holy Spirit has to, take, to give you direction, do this, do that, it will be very difficult. I, I gave a testimony here, you know, anyway, it's, 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 uh, it's not a testimony. You know, uh, my wife always challenged me. She's, she's, a, she's a woman of faith. Especially when it comes on money. You know, when we have to spend the money, she will say, okay, we can do this with this amount of money. I said, that, when I look, oh, that is a lot of money. But I have to obey because I know that she's a woman of faith. I have to follow her. She has more faith than me in that way. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. She has more faith because... When it comes to say, okay, we have to support maybe a brother or a sister, she said, we have to give this amount of money. Sometimes I say, but that is too much. She said, no, it's not enough. If I had more, I would add more. She's a woman of, of faith. And I follow that. But I know that a lot of our church members are not in that level of obedience. Huh? How many times God has spoke to you to give, to bless a brother? You say, no, I can't do it. That's why we don't have the life of the Holy Spirit in the church. We can do a lot of activities. We can sing, worship, or all that. But let us tell you, the Holy Spirit wants us to have the life of the Holy Spirit in the church. And it goes with what? Obedience. Amen? Amen? I have to follow God. So if you don't obey the little ones, the little, little things that the Holy Spirit can tell you in your personal life, there are people who are still fighting with the Holy Spirit, maybe the way they dress. Sometimes the Holy Spirit can tell you that the way you dress is not correct. And God can use anyone to tell you about it. Because your body doesn't belong to you anymore when you're a child of God. And God can tell you the way you dress 
is not a blessing for other people. Amen? But if you are not in the spirit of obedience, you will think that the person is trying to curse you. Amen? And I pray that in our church, we'll have to go in that level. That's why it's sometimes very difficult for me. Sometimes, you know, when somebody grace in a way that is not, you know, uh, uh, decent. You know, sometimes it's very difficult even to talk to the person because I know that the person is not even the level to obey. Huh? Simple thing. You see, Paul, in the, in the book of Acts 16.6, 6, he was in another level of obedience. You know, the Bible said that he was going to preach the gospel. To preach the gospel, is it a blessing? Yes. He, was, he knew that that was the will of God, to go and preach. But the Bible said the Holy Spirit told him not to go. Two times. And the third time, he understood that that was the Holy Spirit that was telling him not to, not to go. You see, to go in that level of obedience, you have first to start with what? The little ones, which is direct. Amen? Oh, I pray that God will help you on that. You see, the church cannot move if we are not in that level. That's why we make a, we make a lot of wrong choices, choices, wrong decisions. Why? Because we don't obey the, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that you can even start something or a business and the Holy Spirit tells you that I don't want you to do it? How will you know that it's the Holy Spirit who's speaking to you? A lot of people are invested a lot of money. They lose the money because they don't obey the Holy Spirit. People in the world who are not Christians, they invest a lot of money. When they lose that money, they kill themselves. But you, a child of God, the Holy Spirit wants to prevent you from all those things. That's why you need what? To obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Amen? So now, if you don't obey, if you don't obey, we go in the second level of my relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you say to a child many times, don't do, don't do, don't do, and the child don't obey you, what's going to happen? You'll be sad, isn't it? Huh? You'll be sad. That's what the Bible says you know, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Don't make the Holy Spirit to be sad. Because every time when the Holy Spirit asks you, do, 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 you don't obey, now the Holy Spirit is in the second level. Now he's sad. He's in you. He has a lot of things to tell you, but he don't speak anymore. I'm sad. Are you in that level with the Holy Spirit? I pray that our church should not be in that level where the Holy Spirit is sad. Because we don't obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because we don't follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. The church is led, controlled, guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? To experience the full joy of the Holy Spirit, we have to obey and avoid to make the Holy Spirit to be sad. Remember, I said this morning that don't quench the life of what? Of the Holy Spirit in your life. It goes gradually. If you don't obey, the Holy Spirit will be what? Sad. And when the Holy Spirit is sad, he's in you. But he don't act anymore. I know a lot of parents who can't give direction anymore to their children. Why? Because many times they are giving direction and the child doesn't obey. Now they are just there looking at them. Do whatever you want to do. But they stay in the same house. They eat together. But they are there. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit can do. And if you continue to make the Holy Spirit to be sad, now you will fall on what we just read this morning. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, 19. You will quench the action, the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Quench. That's why you will see some people, they have been Christian, but they backslide. They are not anymore Christians. 
They start to justify everything. They're not anymore in the way that they want even to obey or to listen. They start to criticize, condemn what God wants for them. You see? You cannot anymore experience the life of the Holy Spirit. If I tell you that, my brother, what you are doing is not right, you try to justify it. Ah, what do you think? You're in that level. You can experience fully the blessings of the Holy Spirit or the life of the Holy Spirit in your life. I pray that in the name of Jesus, this will not happen or is not happening in your life and it will not happen in our church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The way we pray, the way we read the word of God, the way we participate in the, in the, in, in the church activity, the Holy Spirit has to move. Sometimes, I, I'm telling you, sometimes I can pray. God put in my heart that this is what this person needs. But when I looked, the person is not available to even listen. And even you tell to the person, the person will try to argue. No, that's not how God works. Try to bring you another thing. You have quenched the action of the Holy Spirit in your life. Quench the, whole, the action of the Holy Spirit in your life. That is the worst thing that a Christian can experience. That's why Elijah in the Old Testament, the Bible says that the glory of God left him. Some people argue today that Children of God, or the Christian cannot anymore, you know, they can, uh, the Holy Spirit cannot uh, live their life, you know. There are some people, there are some doctrines on that. I don't want to go on that, but what I'm telling you this morning is that if you continue to disobey the Holy Spirit, you will make him to be sad, and then you will bring him in another level where you will quench him. Quench the Holy Spirit. Say that I don't want any more your action in my life. And now we can see it in the church. And if we have people like that, leaders or members of church who are, you know, they are here, but they don't allow the Holy Spirit to move in their life, will always be what? In opposition between the flesh and the spirit. Are you blessed this morning? My prayer for you this morning is what? You know, we, we are praying that God to allow us to participate in the Bible studies. Because the Bible studies open our minds, our knowledge to see God in another level. So, right now, we don't have all our members coming in the Bible studies. I'm not saying that we want to see 100%, but that is the goal. We want to see 100% of our members coming in the Bible studies. At least bring all your thoughts what you believe, around the Bible, we can see what God has for each one of us. You can just come on Sunday, listen to the word of God, and think that it's enough for your spiritual life. You have to come in the Bible studies. We can discuss any question that you have. Bring those questions, and then we can discuss. But this morning, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit wants you to live a life of the Holy Spirit. Don't quench. Because to, to quench the Holy Spirit, it means that you went through a lot of process, isn't, isn't it? Disobedience, and then what? Make the Holy Spirit to be sad, and now you quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not God's power. He's God himself. And he wants to have this relationship with you. That's why I would, I would suggest one thing. If you want to experience the Holy Spirit on you, you have to desire. You see? The good thing is that you have to understand that the, Holy, the relationship with the Holy Spirit is, you know, we renew it every time. It's not because I have the Holy Spirit that is enough. The Bible says in the book of Acts that when the disciples were praying, the Holy Spirit came and filled them. And then they continued to preach the gospel. After that, again, they started to pray again for what? For the Holy Spirit to fill them so that they can continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's something that you have to renew every time. You know, it's just like a relationship between a man and a woman. Or your children with parents. You see, it's a, it's a renewable 
relationship. Don't just say that, oh, I have the, the Holy Spirit on me. You need to renew this relationship every time. Holy Spirit, I come back to you. I want you, to, oh God, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will renew my life. I was disobedient on, on, on your voice. I heard a lot of things, you know, a lot of voices in me. But Holy Spirit, this morning, I come back to you so that you can renew my relationship with you. Do you believe that? Amen? You pray with a, all your heart, God, I come back. Holy Spirit, you have to desire. And the Holy Spirit will look at you and say, yeah, my son, my daughter, she's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. I won't have that relationship with him. You have to desire. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, 5, verse 32, he says he gave the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. God, I'm coming back because I want to obey you. I want to receive your words. Oh, may God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And the second thing is obey. Desire and obey. Two things. It goes to you together. Parallel. Desire. Obey. Holy Spirit, I need you. I'm praying that in our church we will experience the fire of the Holy Spirit. But this cannot happen if our life we are far away from God. We are always disobedient, you know, diso you know, disobey the word of God, disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit. We can't experience the power, the fullness of the Holy Spirit if we continue to disobey. And I feel it. God wants to speak in your heart. I have sometimes, I, I, I observe sometimes, some people when they come in the church, once they start to preach the word of God, they go out. They go out. How can you hear the voice of God while you are going out? Maybe that word in that morning was for you, isn't it? But you went out. Once you went out, you are losing your blessings. Because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. And you went out. I don't want to say what you went to do, but you went out. You left. When you come here, it's to hear the word of God. Lord, Holy Spirit, I want you to speak to me. I have the desire, God, that you should speak to me. And when you come with that mindset, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. We're in, in a certain level that God will start to, to expose your problem. Because sometimes when you, when you have a problem, you think that nobody knows your problem. But God can expose your problem not to humiliate you, but to show you that he's God. He knows your situation, and he wants your situation to be fixed. Hallelujah. We have to go in that level, but we have to have the mindset to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Then the Holy Spirit will start to act. He will start to reveal things. Even the devil has planned something to kill you. God will reveal it so that we can pray and destroy in the name of Jesus. But if you don't obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, or you are quenched the action of the Holy Spirit in your life, how you will benefit from all these blessings. Brothers and sisters, this morning, I'm just encouraging each one of you. God has a lot of things that he wants to do in the church. But we should be mindful that we should obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. We should experience, you know, the, the, this relationship with the Holy Spirit. Are you still in the level of obedience? I'm still trying to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Or are you in the level where you have already even quenched the voice of the Holy Spirit? God has spoke to you many times through the pastors or through your friends. And you refuse to, refuse to, to, to accept what God was telling you. And the Holy Spirit was sad. But now he's already quenched even. You can't anymore hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. This morning, I will invite you to say, Jesus, I want to come back. I want to build up my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit will speak to me. My Christian life, my prayer life, I, I don't even care about reading the word of God. Lord, I'm coming back to you this morning. Hallelujah. Can we pray?
Can we pray this morning? Because God wants to speak to you. And I believe it. Like I told you, sometimes we can quench, we can break this relationship because of a lot of activities. God is not against of our activities, but we have to be mindful that God wants us to keep this relationship with the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 